Since I started working with Hashel, I started to realize how all of his subjects really revolve around a single uh, theme, but they're executed in many different languages. His language in, in painting and his language in um, sculpture. The paintings always have a definite beginning and a definite end. And um, the conversation that goes into the paintings are just that in between. Whereas with his sculptures, the moment that we begin to dive into these um, sculptures, we begin to realize that they almost have a life of their own. And unlike the paintings, they're constantly in motion and they're in constant change. So long as a sculpture is in Hashem's presence, that sculpture will have another life. During this time, I think the reopening of the show is actually very symbolic. It's very much in line with the soul of the exhibition. The soul of the exhibition looks at this notion of rebirth and response. Through the pharmacist, I realized um, just how Hashel works. He collects and he keeps everyone involved that's around him. And it stretches into his family and his surroundings and his friends. And that is at the core of uh, Hashel's work, which I find very, very poetic. About two years ago, I just like got really attracted to pharmaceutical waste. I asked my mom if she could slowly start gathering her empty boxes. And I didn't know where this is going. And part of, you know, the process is actually looking at, you know, the materials, just like I'm dealing with a painting, looking at the paint, and that's how I start. Then it just arrived uh, in, one, in one day. I just put them together. For instance, like, you know, the water uh, bottle labels, the flowers. I made a, like a collection bin, and it says water bottle labels, and people just donate that in like public spaces, and then I take them. So there is like all of these, you know, different uh, points of collection of waste that I see. And I was like, ah, you know, <laughs> I, I can't believe that this is just no longer useful to anyone. Monday would end and then I would count the days down until when the next Monday would happen again. Everything else that I had was canceled. And these meetings, we would like eat pistachio and have some tea and and that's how like everything kind of started to come together, come together you know like art is uh, part of our day-to-day -day practice as well what i loved about the uh, about the monday meetings and just about like life with hashel in general is the element of surprise and this element of surprise always comes up in the most like genuine uh, honest ways um, and the pistachios for us were a symbol of our Monday meetings and the Monday meetings and you know, pistachios are addictive as well. And my, the Monday meetings became very addictive for me. A core interest that we both have is surrealism. And so we decided to go on a trip uh, on a journey together to Spain, to Barcelona, to do the Dali Triangle. And with that, and, and Hashem's natural uh, ways of collecting, this bottle came to life. We're on a funny, sunny day. We were just walking in Barcelona and uh, we found like a nice cafe and we ordered a bottle. And then another day we were walking and we found a store where they sell different beads. And then on the last day, I remember Munira was staying at home and I just went down where there is a, a 99 cent store or like a gift shop. And I found all of these uh, trinkets. All of these things happening on like very separate moments. But then my role as an artist when I come back is actually tying in everything and coming up with a story to share with, the, with, the, with our community. The duck uh, titled as the Dandy, it's a previous sculpture by Meth Abdullah, who is a close friend and also um, a member of Beit 15. And that was her Sif show uh, in 2017 at the warehouse. And one day I just asked her, like, are you done with this sculpture? She's like, yeah, you can take it. I felt like it needed some sort of intervention. And I decided to cut it into half and elongate the, the piece. And then I didn't want to like actually try to mimic her style, but it was like an actual merge between my style and my aesthetics and Mayfan kept uh, 
you know, the original piece and then added the massage machine. It was like a very intuitive response to a piece that was sitting next to me all the time. I, I like to think of my work as stand alone, like it's fully integrated, the lighting, it's in the space, it's experienced uh, as, a, as an independent sculpture. Uh, it makes me excited. <laughs> I think what's incredible about Tasha's work is seeing how all of the works are actually in conversation with one another, as though they exist on their own and they're, they're separate individuals, but they come together within this community or this union that we are discussing um, in the cup and the saucer. And it's this constant back and forth because you see the diverse reality of Hashi's work um, and you wonder, you know, how, how, how has he produced all of these things? But the most incredible thing is when, I, when you realize that all of these things are actually tied very closely with one another. Each body of work transgresses the next. It's, it, they're almost as though they're chapters in a book finalizing uh, or formalizing a particular idea. Part of my practice is actually trying to raise more questions and how the public would respond. It's always like super exciting to me when, you know, the public actually like react to the work uh, physically by, you know, leaving their own uh, marks. And then going back, you know, to my studio and creating a response of that response. And that's how we have dialogue and progress. One of the most uh, magical moments, I'd say, that came out of our Monday meetings was the realization of the title of the exhibition. We were struggling like we and we were encompassing so many things and we needed it to just come together. I will never forget Tasha lifting the teacup taking a sip, looking at the teacup, looking at the saucer and placing it back, and then putting it on the table, and then very, in a very subtle way, asking me, Manira, what do you think the teacup feels when it's separated from its saucer? And in that moment, I just, my jaw dropped, you know? <laughs> Two things that crossed my mind was, first of all, why are you thinking about this, you know? <laughs> And then second of all, uh, that's the name of our exhibition. Because it is about the unit, but it's also about the individual. I don't see a, sep a clear separation or a line between the role of the artist and the curator. Just really like two souls coming together and realizing beautiful things. It was so fluid. There was no need for labels. And there is the curated room where I became a curator almost felt like, you know, a parent dropping their kid to a school <laughs> and waiting in the car to make sure that they went inside safe. He fueled me as much as I fueled him. From that, I think the only moment where I had to put on my, my curatorial hat was when we realized, oh, all these ideas need to be homed somewhere. Hashel's work has the, the tendency to grow and continue to exist and change. And so I had to put on that hat, which is actually difficult for me to tell Hasha, like we have deadlines, we have, you know, stopping points uh, and, uh, and then to define and, and to be both for him and for me to be convinced that these are ready to go. I need to control, you know, my, my, um, my production in terms of like, actually, this is going to make it, this is not going to make it. And there's like pieces that are still being in production you know, while we're still, you know, installing. And I was like, it's like, stop, khalas, no more. <laughs> and I'll be always like, this is the last one, please, please, please. It's very intuitive to me. I, I know when I look at something maybe in this room, like, yeah, this is done. Composition and form are, you know, are the two attributes that kind of like uh, decide on, on, you know, whether it's finished or not. With the sculptures, they're in a constant motion as well, you know. They go to shows, they come back, they get another chance of re, you know, re-existing. What's our, what's our next question? <laughs>